In this tip, I wanted to show you how I was able to remake this great visualization by Sonia uh, for Makeover Monday. So in this example, Sonia was able to uh, basically create a series of slope charts for each state. And if I zoom in on the picture, so let me go ahead and click on the picture here, you can see that there's 10 states going across, and so 10 columns, 5 rows, 50 states. And it's just, just incredibly beautiful visualization. Here's an explanation of how it's built. On the left-hand side, you have the percent of population. On the right-hand side, you have the percent of leg legislature. And you have a line for the men and a line for the women. So I wanted to see how I could build that in Tableau. Well, first, let me show you how I shaped the data in Excel. So in the original data source, we have a column for each state. And then we have a column for the metric, whether it's percent of population or percent of legislature. And then we have two columns, one for male and one for female. Now, I wanted to be able to lay these out into a single grid. So I've created a couple of extra columns I've, and in a separate sheet. So for each state, I have a column and a row, and then a mobile column and a mobile row for my mobile version. So um, what I've done here is I know there's 10, co there's, uh, 10 columns. So the, I just repeat 1 through 10 five times. And then I need to decide which ones go in row 1, which ones go in row 2, etc. But for the mobile version, I know I only have three columns wide, so I just repeat 1 through 3 over and over again. And then I put those into 17 different rows. So that's how I was able to shape the data. Now let's see how I was able to build this in Tableau. The first thing is to connect to the data. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and connect to my women is women in legislature. And I'm going to drag in sheet one. And then I'm going to join it to sheet two. And in this case, I'm going to join by the state. You'll see it picks it up automatically. All right, and I'm going to make it an inner join, and that way the District of Columbia disappears. So let's go ahead and go to the sheet now. And I need my rows and columns to be dimensioned, so I'm just going to drag those up. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, go ahead and create the slope graph. So I've got my metric, which is percent of population or percent of legislature. I want population on the left, so I'll just drag that over. And then in my columns, I want the male. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a shared axis by dropping female on top of the male axis. And then I'm going to move measure names to color. Change my mark type to a line. OK, so now we've got the beginning of our slope graph. I'm going to go ahead and assign my colors. So uh, if I double click on my color legend, then double click on female, I've already gone ahead and pre-selected the colors from, uh, from Sonya's original viz. So I'll hit OK there. And then it's a matter of duplicating the measure values field. So in my case on a Mac I hold the command key down, on a PC you hold control to duplicate the field. And then I'm going to make it dual axis. Right click on that secondary axis and synchronize. Okay, now on my secondary axis I want these to actually be circles. So you see they're a little too big. Actually they're a lot too big. So I'm going to make those, oops, I'm going to go ahead and click on the measure value shelf that has the circles and make those smaller. Okay, so maybe something like that. All right, so from this point, I'm going to go ahead and hide my header for my metric. And I'm going to um, hide my header for my secondary axis. And then on my primary axis, I'm going to go ahead and remove my title. And then if I go back over to the original, you see the scale goes from 0 to 100 with a line at 50. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fix my axis to go from 0 to 1. And then my tick marks, I'm going to go from, I'm going to fix those to every 0.5 units. Okay, now it looks like it disappeared from the screen. That's because these are, uh, if I change these to an average, you'll see them start to show up. But that's okay, I can leave them as sums. The reason we're not seeing them yet is because I don't have all of the states in the view. So I can drag state to detail. Let me go to the all marks card, put state on detail. And now you'll see all of my states. So now it's a matter of, of splitting up the grid. So what I want to do is I want to use, for my desktop version, I'm going to use my columns and put that in the columns. 
I'm going to use row and put that in the rows. And now you can see I've got my nice, my nice grid. For my rows field, I'm going to hit the little triangle and uncheck the include in tooltip and then uncheck show header. And then repeat that for my columns. Uncheck include tooltip, uncheck show header. And now you can see when I hover over it, I get this nice view. Okay, so for my measure values, I'm going to format those. And I'm going to set the format to percentages. And I'll go to zero decimals, that's perfectly fine. And then I'm going to go to my worksheet and set the whole thing to Avenir, my favorite font. Change my tooltip to Avenir as well. All right, so now on my tooltip, you can see I've got, it says metric, state, and then mail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to customize my tooltip. I'm, uh, I'm going to move state to the top. So let me cut that. And maybe make it bigger. So let's maybe make it 14 point. And then, so I can get rid of that. And then my metric, so my, my measure name is actually going to say male or female. So I'm going to put a space in there. And then we're going to insert my metric and then have my metric value and untick my include in tooltips. So now you can see it says Alabama, female percent of the legislature, 14%, male percentage leg legislature, etc. Okay, great. Um, it looks like maybe my circles aren't quite synchronized. So let me show this header again. I don't know why that is. Yep, they are synchronized. Okay, so let me untick that and go to my circles and maybe make them a little bit bigger. Okay, something like that. Now the last thing I need to do is I need to uh, show my grid line for my 50%. So I'm going to go to Format and go to my Lines and then uh, I'm sorry, Rows. Choose the grid line and make sure it's the same gray as everything else. All right, lastly I'm going to format my axis. I want that to be a little bit lighter gray. Again, I want all of my grays to match, so I'm going to just pick the same gray. Okay, and then I could maybe shrink this axis a little bit if it lets me. I don't know why it's not letting me. Okay, something like that. And then the last thing that I did was um, I want state to be on uh, my label. So you notice I put that on there. I'm going to deselect that. And then what I did was I went for each state, I clicked on these circles. I'll just do it for a few of them for now. And then I go right click on those circles, choose Mark Label, Always Show. And then from there, it's a matter of just manually moving them. Okay, so something like this. So you get the idea. I could take all of them. And I have to do that 50 times, which takes forever, but it's worth it in the end. And of course, I'm not going to do it all and sit here and bore you. And what I'm going to do here for my my labels is I'm going to change my font. Again, I want it to be the same color as everything else. Okay, maybe Arkansas looks like it needs to be moved over a little bit. So I just try to center them the best I can. So this is my desktop version. And then I can go ahead and throw this in a spreadsheet. And for me, I like to always set my first set my dashboard size to automatic and then exactly and shrink it down to 935, drag the sheet in. I'm going to go ahead and remove my legend. And then I'm going to change my title. And I'll say women are underrepresented in state legislature. All right, maybe make it a little bit bigger font, maybe 18. Okay, there we go. And there's my desktop version. So I'll call this desktop. And now I'm going to duplicate my desktop version sheet. Maybe slide it over. And I'll call this my mobile version. And in this case, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my M column, which is my mobile column, and replace columns. Take my M row and replace my rows. And there we go. So now I just untick my show header. And I don't have to repeat all of the same steps again. So that's great. So now for my, uh, my dashboard in this case, I want it to be 325 wide. And let's say about 1400 high. And I can go ahead and put my mobile version on here. Again, get rid of that. Delete. 
maybe in this case make my font about 12 point. Okay, and now I've got, maybe I need to make it slightly taller to make the boxes look a little bigger. Okay, so now I've got my mobile version. So I could call this mobile. And then I publish these up to Tableau. And then on my blog, I use a bit of CSS to determine which one goes where. The final version looks something like this. So actually, it looks just like this. So you'll notice I've gone ahead and put all 50 states in the view. And my mobile version will look like this, where it's built more for scrolling. So hopefully you like that. And if you have any other questions, let me know.